In 2004 also, I say praise God because after losing the child, the doctor said to me there was nothing they can do. Will that make time stand still for you if a doctor walks in a room and says, I'm sorry to tell you this, but there's nothing that we can do. Start making arrangements. And my arrangements, little did I know, in 2005, Jesus saved my life. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus saved my life, saved our life. Amen. The, the, and glory be to God, a big part of that was, as you guys know, there's some of you that's new here, praise God. And for those of you who are new here, we're, we're not here to embarrass you. Um, we just want to say on the count of three, one, two, three. Welcome home with all of our hearts. You don't need to look no more, no further. This is your home. God's led you here. God wants you to be here. Get rooted, planted in. Praise God. Um, listen, we're just a bunch of broken people, gracefully broken, that want to serve a perfect God. Amen. Amen. And uh, the beauty is, is that if you worship God, he'll change you. He will. He'll change you. And I'm excited about that. Amen. Because we all change every day. I want God to change me every day. Amen. And so I say all this to you because this is like of all the years that, that I can, listen, I know we, we could talk about so much more. But Holy Spirit said this is it. This is what he just wanted to show on that screen. And you have, guess what, you, ha you guys have, every one of you, you guys have time stamps that either you remember the time when or when time stood still in your life. Right? That moment that you, you, you know, that, that whatever. And it doesn't have to be bad. It could be a gooder and gooder event. Amen. Like having a child. Amen. And, and, and watching that child grow up and hallelujah, we just witnessed it. Like with Blake. Amen. Watching that child do amazing things. Amen. Come on, Zach. I mean, you ooze it, brother. You ooze it, man. All the glory of God, you ooze it. Praise the Lord. You know, so there's a lot of time stamps that it's up to you to, to, to keep here, right? I pray in Jesus' name that tonight or today, whatever it is, there's tonight somewhere in the world, that Holy Spirit will get such a hold of you in this worship service that he's not only going to rock your world, but that he's going to show you and reveal to him not only his identity and his character and, and his motives, but also he wants to re reveal to you how he will hold time for you. You see, the difference in what I've shown you is events that took place, right, that happened either to me or to the world, that it stopped time. But I'm talking about having such a relationship with God Almighty that you have the ability to be in his presence and he will stop time for you. Can I get an amen? Are you excited about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. When time stood still, praise God. I love this because you guys know what that's about, right? Amen. Let me ask you something. What happens if it's this year? <laughs> How many of you ready to go? Take this world and shove it. I don't want to be here no more. That's like an Islander slash Kentuckian version of that song because I don't even know the song. I just like that, that, that part, right? I, I'm serious. Y'all pray for me. I mean, I, I'm so excited and focused about this time. But the question that God said is, go ahead and put that up there, my son, because I want to plant the seed with my children and my holy church, my beloved children. Where will you be? Woo, I pray that we're gone. I pray that you're not going to be up here preaching, talking about, yeah, remember when everybody left? That was back in 2020. God forbid, right? I was just up there with Brother Aaron worshiping. We were praying, just worshiping God, and we were in fellowship. And he, he man, you're an anointed man of God, tech team, praise God. And I want, I want you guys to know, Brother Aaron was like, brother, can you imagine what this world will be like when, when we're all gone? When half the world gets raptured out of here, half the world, can you think about the mass, not only the mass murders, but just the mass accidents, period. So let's just say after a while, all the accidents subside, right? 
And now there's all this emergency and everything, all these bodies everywhere. Now you got all the wild animals, you know, the beast of the air cleaning up, just eating people. You're going down to Kroger or Walmart, and you just see bodies on the side of the road. You see fires everywhere because I'm going to tell you, there's going to be houses unattended and left alone. There's going to be looting. I'm not trying to fear it, but I'm telling you the truth. Listen, I lived in California. I lived in San Diego where this stuff took place and it wasn't the end of the world. It was just rioting. Craziness, right? Can you imagine, though, when we're gone, I'm speaking life, we're out of here, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, we're all at the feet of Jesus having a party, just loving on each other, going, hallelujah, we're, we made it, we're home, amen. And we won't have any recollection of what's happening down here. But guess what? God is so amazing and powerful that he holds time, that he's rewinding time to, to save some souls that's here today that you may not know Jesus that way. You may not know where you're going to go if you took your last breath. And this is the purpose of this worship service and what you're going to see on the screen and how Holy Spirit wants to not only encourage you but love on you and just bless you. How many of you know that we have a good daddy? God is a good father. He's good and perfect. He does not want to harm you. He does not want to hurt you. Now hear my heart. You have people saying, well, he'll spank you. Well, why did he spank you? Is it because he's bad or you were doing something bad? <laughs> Can I get, like, come on, let's get right, right? Amen. He's not a bad daddy. I'll tell you right now, when he spanks me, it's because I, I wasn't acting right. And I live with a tattletale. She tells on me and everything. Pray for me. <laughs> Psalm 46.10 says this. Be still and know. You, many of you have memorized this. And just be part of worship, okay. Because when you, get, when you get full of your head and you're like, oh, I know that scripture. And it says, be still and know that I'm God. I will be right there. You're just drowning out Holy Spirit. Right now, we're just at this part. Be still and know. Say it with me, know. It's very important to know in the book of Revelation, Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Revelation 21, 6 says this. It is done. Say it with me. It is finished. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost. From the spring of the water of life. Amen. This past Wednesday we were in, um, oh, hallelujah, in worship about the Samaritan woman at the well. Talking about the living water. Amen. And the salvation that took place at that moment. Revelation 22, 13 says this. I am. Say with me. I am. I am. Are you a beloved child of God? Are you healed by the blood? Are you saved? Are you an overcomer? Are you a miracle worker? Are you a blesser? Are you a conqueror? Are you royalty? Are you an eternal soul? Are you healthy? Are you wise? Are you strong? Are you courageous? Are you the body of Christ? Come on now, hallelujah. I am, I am, I am. There's power in those words because you're calling. See, hallelujah. You think that you're saying it about I am, but I am is who I am. And he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. The beginning and the end. Amen. And I love this picture because you look at the great I am who was crucified and he held in his hands time. The beginning and the end. Last time I checked, Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. Last time I checked, the name of Holy Spirit's church is called And the reason why his arms are open, he didn't need no nails. We did that to him. He didn't need no nails to have his arms wide open. His arms are always wide open. Amen. For every soul. And so it's the beginning and the end, the first and the last, alpha and omega. The significance with alpha and omega is this. Some of you know this, some of you don't. Holy Spirit said teach it, so we're going to teach. Amen. 
In the Greek alphabet, alpha, in the Greek alphabet, the letter A in the alphabet is the beginning, just like in the English alphabet, A. But in omega, omega, say it with me, omega, in Greek, that is the last letter. So all the letters in Greek, it's in him. Say it with me, all the letters. That means every word, amen. And so speaking of that, when time stood still, we're talking about not every word. Hebrews 12, 2 says this, looking unto Jesus, say it with me, be focused. Say it, say it like you mean it, stay focused. Stay focused. Amen. If you're focused on Lord Jesus Christ, if you're focused on Lord Jesus Christ, would you be quick to cuss? If you're focused on Lord Jesus Christ, are you quick to just gossip? If, you, if you're focused on Lord Jesus Christ, are you quick just to hide in your room and just not want anything to do with the church or the church family? See, when you're focused on Jesus Christ, his goodness through his spirit starts to overwhelm you, starts to motivate you, starts to influence you. Can I get an amen? I mean, when, when, when you choose to worship God, when you choose to, to bless his holy presence in your life, you not only know your value, you, not know, you, not know, you just don't know your value, but you know the price that was paid. And then you start to know his heart for his people. You see, there's many of us that we've lived our life before Christ just wide open. I like that saying here in Kentucky. I wear it out too, right? As wide open as PJ was, and we're not comparing notes now or nothing, I was multiple times worse. I have a rap sheet. I have a, I have, I have a track record of it, right? But PJ will tell you he was wide open to the point where he knew if I continue this way, I will die. He will. He's testified. He's preached. He's shared in that prayer room. He's testified it. And there's many of us that has testified that, that I live my life wide open without Jesus, and I knew where it was going to get me. Amen? Can we say it all together? Nowhere. And by the grace and mercy of God, through divine timing, through divine, hallelujah, beloved, Beloved Ashley here didn't even know. She was just like, hey, you know what, I'm just, <laughs> I'm not going to let you live like this. Come with me. Even Beloved Ashley didn't know. She reached into the pit of hell and said, you don't belong here. You belong right here where Daddy God wants you. And you know what's so good about our father is that PJ, as stubborn as he is, he was so fixated on the beauty and admired Ashley and just, you know, like, 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 like a lost puppy dog. Just like, take me home. I want to stay with you. I want to be with you, you know. Don't you love it when dogs go like that? And they're just like, that's PJ, right? But the glory, the glory of Holy Spirit is, this is mine. Amen. I don't mean to preach your story, but you sh have you not shared that, that much already? Right? From your own mouth and from... from Say it with me. It's not my story. It's his story. Let's say that again. It's not my story. It's his story. You witnessed it with Blake. You see how humble he is and, man, a mighty warrior. But you saw his heart. I'd like to thank God. Man, I wish when I was that young that I would have that kind of relationship with the Lord. Amen. But you know what? I, it's so good or now in my life. I'm surrounded by many. Hallelujah. Many young ones that, guess what? It doesn't matter how this world acts. It doesn't matter how my teammates act. It doesn't matter what they say or he say or she say. I'm going to keep blessing my God and watch what my God will do in me and through me. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Watch what my God will do in me and through me. Amen. How many of you know that haters are going to hate? That's the devil. Demons just crunchy all the time. 
If you get offended, I'm not calling anybody out. My elders know that right now. I'm just telling you right now, just this. <laughs> You're always blessed, always happy, always. Yes, because my God is good. Jesus Christ is Lord, and his Holy Spirit lives in me. So I'm going to reign. Hallelujah. I'm going to reign. You know why? He's my God. He's my daddy. He's my daddy, and he loves me. Amen. Say his name, daddy. There's some of us that need to know God as a daddy this morning. Amen. Wow, we're already approaching that time. I'm only halfway there. Lord, help me. Hold time. Hallelujah. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down. Say it with me. Sat down. At the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. It's very important to know that God holds every letter, every word. Lord Jesus Christ is known. This isn't my, my words. This isn't my mouth. This, isn't, this is God's mouth and God spoke it through his Holy Spirit. That Jesus Christ is the word of God. That the word became flesh. And the flesh that walked this earth to teach us of the Father's love, guess what we did? Kneeled him. We nailed him. We, we, we crucified him. Spit on him. So hear me, family. That's already done took place, right? It's already done did. Amen? But hear my heart. We still live in that world. So if you think that being a Christian means... That this world is going to accept you, and you're going to be everybody's best friend, and everything is just going to be peachy clean and a bunch of roses, and sorry, sorry, but you got something else coming. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. And in these last days, Holy Spirit, he's looking at every individual one. Every beloved son, every daughter. And he's talking to you going, where am I at with you? Are we good? Do you love me? I love you, Father. Okay, if you love me, you're going to change this. Right? Isn't that how sweet, how Holy Spirit is? If you love me, then you're going to change this because it hurts me. And I'm just trying to protect you. Can you get an amen? amen? So going into all this. To, 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 to understand who God truly is, he holds time in his hands. See, we live in this world where it, time just keeps. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round, right? And isn't that the way it is? It don't matter how you feel. It don't matter what you're doing. It don't matter how much money is in the bank. It don't matter how healthy you are. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. It doesn't matter the church attendance, if it's thriving. It doesn't matter if there's only a few people. Time is just, this is what we know. But God is telling you today, stop worrying or thinking or looking at time. Look at me who holds time. Amen. Stop being worried about, oh, I, 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 you know, I hear this all the time. Oh, pastor, you know, I, I, I was married and man, in that marriage, nothing good came out of it. And it was like five years of my life, just a waste of time. Well, yeah, because that's the way you see it. And sometimes I'm considered the bad guy because I'm just like, you choose to see it that way. You just don't know I was abused physically, mentally, everything. Okay, I'm not discounting that. But you can make a choice and say, I thank you, Father, that you got me out of that situation. And I learn now. I learn. I learn from that. And guess what? Oh, it gets gooder. You want blessings over your life? How many wants blessings over their life? How many of you want blessings over your family, your children? How many of you want to be protected by COVID? Hallelujah. Now check this out. F freeze frame. Just stay right there. Because the ones who don't want it, you know what I'm fixing to do. And guess what? There's some in there. And hallelujah, I take it for the Kerrangian household. And I thank you, Father God. It's like Christmas morning. Amen. And the ones sitting there going... You done touched or took my blessing. God just gave it to you, but you didn't want it. God is saying, you want breakthrough, you want blessings, you want this life of abundance? 
Start by just being grateful. When you don't know what was done to me, I don't. But God knows. And guess what? You're not there anymore. You're here now. Let's move forward. Can I get a holler? Let's move forward. Please. Family, can, can we all say that together? Please look to your neighbor to your left. Say it with me. Move forward. Look to your neighbor to your right. And you tell them, move forward. You know why? In this, oh, hallelujah, you're so anointed. You could feel the presence of Holy Spirit going, move forward, church. You know why? We got work to do for the Lord. We got work to do. There's souls to be saved, amen? Hallelujah. So in all that, in all that, it leads to this. There's the alpha and there's the omega. The end of my life was in 2005. Happy birthday, amen. It was March 5. March, March, March 5 is truly my birthday. March 5. March 5 is my... I wish it was May the 4th. <laughs> Carry a lightsaber wherever I go. <laughs> March 5 is really my birthday. That's when I died. Amen. Just like you all, we celebrate. Remember, God's not in a moment. He's in eternity. Last week we talked about that, right? How the reasonable service is no longer just once a year with our God. He's in every breath. He's in your every breath. He's in you. He's in you. Lord Jesus Christ eliminated all handmade by man regulations and buildings and curtains and temples and trinkets and all that stuff. Lord Jesus, say his name, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Woo! One more time, say it again. Lord Jesus Christ. Woo! Do it again and you do the brrrr with me, all right? Say his name again, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Woo! <laughs> Amen? Listen. When you say that name, that name always, I'm not telling you what to do. I can never, I can, I can't do nothing. Y'all agree? I can't. I'm worshiping with you, and the power of Holy Spirit is the only one that can motivate you, change you, and bless you. He's God Almighty. I can't do nothing. Don't let me fool you. I can't. But what I'm asking and I'm begging you is, when you say Jesus Christ and it does nothing for you, something's got to change. Can I get a hallelujah? Something. Hey, you, hey, you check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? Because guess what? Wrecking is coming. There is power in that name. When you say that name, hell, Satan himself has to go, huh? You, 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 you really, get, I pray that you get this. I rarely come up here. I pray that you get this. It's kind of like a bank robber or whatever trying to escape. And then the spotlights come on and it's like. When you say the name of Jesus Christ, all of the heavenly realms submit. I pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There you go again. That every one of his holy children has a fresh anointing of his glory today. That you don't walk out of here the same. Amen? Amen. It says, be still and know that I am God. We're going to go over this quickly. Bear with me. If you want to know more about this or you need to know the scripture, come tomorrow night. Monday evening Bible study. Amen? How awesome was this Bible study that just took place. Amen? Give God praise if you were here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some of us that like to be spanked. We found that out Monday night. Right? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about anybody, but I'm just saying, right? It's Bible study. Amen. I don't like to be spanked. I'll tell you that right now. I just shared that with you. But I know when God spanks me, I did something wrong. Amen. Tuesday night, I am recovered. We had a salvation. Amen. Is it okay to clap in God's house? All right. I said salvation, yeah, that's what I said. I mean, if there's no greater thing, there it is right there, right? 
Tuesday night, I am recovered, right? Wednesday night, we had amazing um, young adults and youth. My goodness, they rocked it out with the Operation Christmas Shout. How many boxes was it, was it Pastor Tish? 306 souls. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. And how many believe that when they, when they receive that, that little child is going to say, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you love me. God, you love me. Amen. And it comes from all the way out here, Lebanon, Kentucky. It doesn't matter. Praise God. God is severed head over heels in love with you. So we're going to go quickly about this. And if you want to know more, I, I, I do mean it. Yeah, just go back over the video. Um, but for time's sake. I know many of you are like, it doesn't matter what the time is, but trust me, it does to some people. And I'm trying to be obedient in that. Um, so Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we like to say agape. That's the perfect love, right? Um, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about the perfect love. Now we got to remember in King James Version, it says charity. Then we translated that word from charity to love. But the true meaning of this charity, love, if you go to the original text, is agape. Agape means the perfect love of God. Amen. Now, the only way you know the perfect love of God is if you know who, who God is. Can I get an amen? Right? I, if, I, if I claim that I want a bean and cheese burrito, what needs to be in the burrito? Amen. Well, if you claim that you know my God, who's in our God? Ain't that beautiful? Amen. If the cheese is missing, is that a bean and cheese burrito? No. That's just toots waiting to happen. Right? Yeah, I said toots. Some of y'all need to wake up. Amen. So same with my God. If you claim that my God is just God and Jesus, no, it's not. I feel like Elf. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. That guy's like, what are you talking about? No, it's not. This isn't. No, it's not. This isn't. The North. No, it's not. Why does he know that? He's been there. Amen. Right? Well, I know who my God is. Amen? Amen? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is the great I am. Amen? So are we all good with this? Oh, there it goes. Holy Spirit. So the Father in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, we learn his character in the great I am. We learn that he's intimate as a father, that he wants a relationship with his children. Old Covenant, Old Testament. Can I get an amen? amen. And his, he as a daddy, he was always chasing down his children, always trying to guide them, lead them, wanted to be their God. But guess what? Uh-uh. Too scary. Too scary. Just give us a king. We're going to be happy with that. They didn't know that what they really asked for is, give me Jesus. Can I get an amen? The king of kings. Hallelujah. So we talk about the intimacy of the father. We know his affection because you see his affection. Like, for example, with Abraham, right? He told Abraham, take your son. Your only son. Take Isaac. Go ahead and do business. Praise God for an obedient brother, right? He's like, okay. You said so. This is what we're going to do, right? What do they do? They go on the mountain. But what does Father God do? He provides the sacrifice. He just wants to see your heart. Amen. See, there's some of you right now going through a season of testing. But here in my heart, just follow through with what God tells you to do. You know why? He, say it with me, God provides. And then last but not least, you see God's motives. Every one of his motives is not only for his glory, but it's for the blessing of his children. It's for the blessing of his children. It's for the blessing of his children. It's not to put harm on his children. It's to protect and to bless his children. Amen. Are we all on the same page? Say it with me, Daddy God. Now we're going to go into the son in the New Testament. Amen. The son in the New Testament, this is the great I am. God shows through Lord Jesus Christ that it's possible it's possible to have an impartation. Say this word with me, impartation. impartation. What I'm saying is, Lord Jesus Christ, this is, this is why it's above our baptistry for crying out loud. It's not just to be fancy and to show people, oh, look at how fancy we are with this fancy picture. No. It's the truth in our very God-given identity. That Lord Jesus Christ himself had to come to terms with God and says, okay, this is what you have been doing to wash away sins. You washed away, you, you washed away sins, right? And now I'm going to follow through. But what happens when he went into that water and he came out? God spoke. God spoke. Holy Spirit went down. Holy Spirit rested on him. And God said, this is my beloved son. 
You see, beloved child of God, when you called out to Lord Jesus Christ, the same exact thing happened to you. God Almighty said, this is my beloved child. What happened? There was an impartation. You see, you called on Jesus, and in your confession of Jesus, I make you my Lord. You're my Savior. However you did it, it was perfect. Did you recite scripture when you got saved? No? Huh? Did you know how many books of the Bible did you know when you got saved? Huh? Were you going to church service every time it was open when you got saved? My point is, was there any other criteria other than you calling on God and receiving Jesus Christ that now you are an eternal soul in Christ's name? Hallelujah. Did God say anything, did God say anything else? He just wanted your heart. Can I get an amen? And what happened? The impartation took place. After the impartation takes place, Lord Jesus Christ taught us that there's an admiration for God. That there's an admiration for his love. Do you admire God's love for you? You see, we far too often we get caught up in trying to be the perfect husband. Far too often, ladies, you try your best to be the perfect wife or the perfect mom. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to raise these kids and I'm trying to, you know. But here in my heart, the only way you could obtain that type of perfection is allowing his presence, allowing his love. To be the one and only thing that matters to your life. Because when you are saturated and overflowing in this admiration of how much daddy God loves you. Because here is Lord Jesus Christ teaching us that was not people just blown away by Jesus? Was not the religious people blown away and going, who is this guy? What are you talking about? How dare you come up in here and just mess everything up? We had religion going on. I'll rebuke that. Amen. Give me a high five, sis. I'll rebuke that. Lord Jesus Christ said, it ain't religion. It's a relationship. Amen. And let me show you. Let me show you the relationship. Right? See, religion, hear my heart. We lived in this day and age right now. There's people, maybe it's your family, friends. Maybe it's people that used to come here. I don't know. But there's people that are going to try to rattle you. There are people that are going to attack you. They're going to say things. And the only way you can show them Jesus is the way you treat them. And sometimes the way you treat them, all it means is you just got to zip it and go. Can I hear an amen? Because like Pastor John says, the moment you open this, the toothpaste come out. Whoo, come on now somebody. And when that toothpaste come out, I just did it this week. You can't put it back in. So ghetto, I try to save it. So I just put it on the brush and leave it there for next time. Trish washes it off. She's like, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that, amen. Say it with me, don't do that. Last but not least, say this with me, magnificence. You see, the magnificence of God in this New Testament, there's a, you know what I love about an Old Testament, New Testament? There's an old story, but then there's a new story. And Lord Jesus Christ came, hallelujah, as the Alpha and Omega. Remember, every letter, every word, the word of God, he's saying, you guys think you know the story, but let me tell you about my daddy. How many of you like that song? Um, let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no one. Rise up in an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. <laughs> but you know what's so funny is that how, how and, and listen, I'm picking on myself, okay? I'll be, I'll be just jamming out in that song. Then I go either go to the hospital or go, you know, to an appointment and come back in the car and I'm just running my mouth. Is that telling you about my Jesus? Just because nobody's around, is that okay? Preach to me. Help me. Help me help you help me. If, just, if I'm in my car and I'm mad and I'm just running my mouth, oh, this person just always just trying to get up in my business. Is that okay? Is that evil? Right? And help me because I don't want that in my life. 
Lord, forgive me. I don't want that in my life. Amen. I don't want to talk about nobody. I don't want to put, no, I don't want to squeeze toothpaste all over the place. Everything's expensive these days. Say it with me. Impartation. Admiration. Magnificence. This is the story of Lord Jesus Christ and how his introduction to God was. Amen. Last but not least, you know who's coming up. Holy Spirit, the new covenant. Amen. The Holy Spirit in the new covenant, praise God. Say it with me, my God. my God. Hallelujah. Say it with some stank on it. My God. My God. Hallelujah. Come on, I'll say it like you mean it. My God. my God. Oh my goodness. You could feel the power and the authority of the resurrection power that is in you. And guess what? It doesn't only have to be like this in church. When you leave here today, the anointing, God's presence is in you and his hand has rested upon you. So you keep speaking life and you keep speaking the promises of God. Amen? Amen? I'm just going to finish this off. What Holy Spirit taught in the new covenant as the great I am is this. You now know your identity as a beloved child of God. How do you know your identity? You know who agape is. Who is agape? Hallelujah. Can you break them up? Will you listen to somebody who breaks them up? Just pray for them, right? Right, pray for them. I was at Kroger the other day. This gentleman was like, you believe in Jesus, I don't. I'm like, I'm going to pray for you. I don't need your prayers. I'm like, yeah, you do. Straight up, Brother Darren. He's like, he's like I don't need your prayers. I'm like, yeah, you do. And he's like, what makes you think I need you? I go, because one day, I told him, one day you will bow. One day you will confess. And I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Because you know why? He's so blinded. He's caught up in religion. He's so blinded. And I'll tell you right now, there's many. But here in my heart, the devil wants me to judge him, talk about him. No. Nope. No. Nope. I pray for you. I love you. Amen. You ever go in and give somebody a hug and they don't want you to hug you? Awkward. Awkward, right? You go in to hug you and they go like this. Guess what? I just hugged that hand. Here, come here. <laughs> this is what I did. I went to hug. And I said, <laughs> I went, <laughs> you know, because I, I, don't, I, I don't like rejection. I don't like denial. So I just hugged, I just hugged the hand. Hug somebody's hand. Amen. Just hug. God bless you, you know. Hey, is it just me? You go over there, you see somebody, <laughs> you see somebody at the at Walmart or wherever, and you're waving, and they're waving back, and you think they're waving at you, and they're, oh, is that not like the most awkward situation? Because don't, 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 if you're like me, you go like this, and, right? You just try to try, act like you weren't waving. You know what I mean? Is it just me? Okay, so all you all don't, it doesn't bother you. Y'all be careful. Watch. You're gonna wave at somebody this week. Going, dang, Pastor just talked about that in the message. Uh, so we know who agape is and say this with me, manifestation. The glory of God, the glory of this Bible, the glory of our God, Jesus, <laughs> and Holy Spirit is this. Beloved family, you can know every scripture, every book. You could preach every message. You could be as good as you possibly can be in this world. But if you don't realize... That the purpose of Lord Jesus Christ's coming was so that God could live inside of you through his Holy Spirit. I will be bold enough to say it with my elders and pastor holding me accountable. You missed it. And God is giving you an opportunity today. Will you make it right? Because guess what? Our God is not just receiving Jesus and then having no relationship and not acknowledging who Holy Spirit is. That's blasphemy. God is saying, will you have all of me because I want all of you. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor. Stand up on your, on your feet. Praise God. You see this awesome outline here. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The intimacy, agape, to meditate. This is the Old Covenant, Old Testament. Then you got the New Testament in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you got the New Covenant. The beauty of what Holy Spirit shows is this. Check this out. Every one of our Bibles is designed like that. You have in the front. You have the Old Covenant, Old Testament. In the middle, you have the Gospel. And on the back side, you have the New Covenant and the New Testament. Amen. Say it with me. I am. 
Isn't it amazing? You're holding your I am right here in the written word, in written form. Amen? He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. When you talk about being exalted, it had taken him dying on the cross and raising from the dead, that Lord Jesus Christ, to reach his eternal exalted rank. What does exalted mean? High, high ranking, elevated, prominent, superior, lofty, grand, noble, dignified, eminent, prestigious. I don't know why the month of August is in there, but anyways, I just copied and pasted. Look it up later. Ill illustrious, distinguished, esteemed, venerable, influential, important, powerful. What's the opposite of it? Low. Low. Say it with me, low. In the state of extreme happiness is the second part of this definition for exalted. And it says, I type this out. I, Lord Jesus Christ, am exalted in my resurrection and my salvation and perfect work in and through. Say it with me, you. Say it with me, that's me. This is how everything gets grand and I, t I promise you a big promise. Do you want God the whole time? Amen. Amen. Because we remember all the times that time stood still. But how awesome is it that you can have the power in Christ, in your relationship with God, that he can hold time for you. Amen. Well, here's the secret. We have to get into terms of knowing who the great I am is. Where is he living right now? See, there's some of you already doing it. You're going, everybody do that with me. The great I am, this is his holy place. You are his walking temple. And the glory of God Almighty is he wants to be shown through you. He wants to live in you and be in you and, and, and be for you. He wants to be able to flow in you and through you in every aspect of your life. Whether you're a boss, a supervisor, you know, whether you're working on the production line, whether you're an office person or maybe you're a medical worker, maybe you're a guardian of, of, of this fallen world as a, as a police officer, as a sheriff. Whatever it is, God wants to reign in your life. And he's asking you today, will you allow him to? And the beauty is when you allow him to, now you get this revelation in your meditation that, oh my goodness, God, you're going to work the miracles through me. You're going to reach out to all these children through me. You're going to do these miracles for your son through me, through your children. You're going to break people free from addiction from anxiety, from torment, through, say it with me, me. See, I refuse being part of a fallen world where we're like, God, where are you? Why don't you do something? Why don't you help me? Guess what, family? He already did. His name is Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, Brother Mike. Listen. Say it with me, through me. God wants to be glorified in you and through you. And if the Father, the glory of God, His holiness can reign in you, when you stand there and you're being still, you'll know that in His presence, the Father doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter as far as what my emotions are. It doesn't matter as far as what I'm battling with. Because your word says that I have victory in you. That Lord Jesus Christ, you want it all. That your blood, your sacrifice is enough. And that Lord, with every soul right now just standing on their feet in your presence, you ask them to stand. And Father, I thank you for them standing. That Father, as we close this worship service, that we never close our worship that our worship in every breath, Father God, that we will be your holy church, Father. We will be your children that you can count on, Father God. That no matter where we're at, Father God, you can count on us, Father, to say, can I pray for you? Can I hug you? It's going to be all right. God loves you. How can you say that? Listen, I felt the way you felt. And I just know that God loves you because Jesus died for you. And Father, I pray over your church that we protect your love in a way, Father God, that we don't hurt you. Don't allow us to hurt you, Father. And Holy Spirit, that you would bless us with a fresh anointing. You see, family, when you look on the screen and you see Lord Jesus Christ holding that cross as he's carrying it, 
You see, in his mind, in his mind, he was focused on, I'm going to be back with my father. But I need you to know this, in his mind is, I want to live inside of Bruce. <laughs> I want to live in every breath of Rocky. I want to bless her heart's desires. I want to live in Sierra. I want to reign in her life. I want to bless you, Brother Darren. I want to live in your life. I want every, every one of your concerns to be mine. And I want you to trust me and know that I have it. You see, when we come to these kind of terms with the Lord, beloved family, nothing can stop you. You know why? Because God Almighty has gone before you. Amen. So I pray in Jesus' name that you come to this altar with an offering of yourself and saying, Father God, I want to I wanna choose to be in awe of you. This is the beauty about a beloved child of God. Say with me, I am. This is the beauty about you. Are you listening, beloved? Are you listening, amen? You have the ability after today to go in your prayer place, to go wherever you're at and call on his holy name and to just stand still in time with the Father God who loves you and adores you and just wants to be there for you and wants to take every concern because guess what? Lord Jesus Christ is all we have and Holy Spirit will do the rest. Amen. Be still. Know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. How can God be exalted? Listen. Where does God live? <laughs> Isn't he a beautiful God? That because he is your Lord, your Savior, in your life, he will be victorious as long as we give him all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Come to the altar.